Thank you, Sterling Price, for bringing this to my attention. The red flag gun law. Red flag gun law. We don't think much. I live in New York. I live in a in a in New York City. So guns are not. Well, there's no open carry laws. There's no there's no open carry. There's no carry. There's no nothing. Guns are pretty much ban in city limits. So it's not it's not a subject of uh, contention here. Most people don't own guns because they're too owning a handgun is almost is very very difficult to uh to to do uh in a city so uh i mean people have hunting rifles and all that stuff but here we go so so what is a red flag gun law that's basically a law that says a healthcare provider or a police officer or some judge can step into your premise and take your legally possessed gun away from you to protect you from others and yourself. All right, so let's talk about it. And uh, here, here's an article from uh, Zero Hedge. Sheriff willing to go to jail over red flag uh, gun law. We'll look at a bunch of videos, too, that I found uh, on this subject. Uh, it's a matter of doing what's right. So... A Colorado sheriff has stated that the that his oppo- he opposes a proposed gun new gun control law so much that he is willing to go to jail rather than enforce it. Weld County Sheriff Steve Rems told CNN that it's a matter of doing what's right. Hmm. Here's a bit of background on the bill. The law, the, the law Reams says he will not enforce is a red flag gun confiscation law. House bill uh, known as a red flag bill or the extreme risk protection orders bill passed the Colorado Senate 18 to 17 on Thursday and is scheduled Monday for the House floor. With Democratic majority in both chambers, state Republicans have too few votes to stop the bill. So it's rolling. I mean, the Democrats' loony left is is rolling with this idea. Last month, we reported uh, that legislators and sheriffs in the state have been pushing uh, back against the bill. What what exactly is a red flag? Here it is. Officially called Extreme Risk Protection Order, ERPO, ERPO, red flag laws permit police health care providers or family members to petition a state court to order the temporary removal of firearms from a person who may present a danger to others or themselves. No, there's look health care. This is a this is an attack on 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 mental health, right? The the currently the the pharmaceutical industrial complex is trying to claim that half the people in the country are have mental illness, so. So, in other words, if you're if you reach out to a doctor, and you say you're depressed, and uh, you know sometimes you might just say, oh, you know, I'd rather I'd rather jump off the bridge than go on living like this, even figuratively, right? You would be put into the category of suicidal, and and out to hurt yourself, and that information could then be provided to a court. As a as a medical person, you got your, your fancy certificate. And you go into the court and say, uh, well, this person said they think about jumping off the bridge, right? Or, you know, but most, most suicides happen through gun, with guns, right? And that, that order could actually have police come to your door and take away your gun, sometimes executing you for not giving up your gun, right? Shooting, having a shootout to shoot you down to take your gun that some, some, Healthcare lady said that you're a risk to yourself. No, you're a risk to me because you you got the police coming knocking down my door with guns drawn, trying to take a gun away from me. So, so, all right. So th- there's not much more to say. It's just this is a stupid bill. And um, let's re- let's let's see what the uh, let's let's look at this. Leaders of 34 Colorado counties are ready to fight the red flag bill. But will it really come to sheriffs refusing to enforce a court order or even sitting in their own jails? We don't know because the governor and attorney general are refusing to tell us how they plan to handle the situation. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn reports on a showdown where only one side is speaking up.
Welcome, Governor Polis. One day after the red flag bill landed on his desk, Governor Jared Polis had to have expected questions about it, but instead made a quick exit from a news conference on another issue. He did recently indicate enforcement of the red flag bill boils down to local control. Every law enforcement agency has to make prioritization. He drew criticism when he compared enforcing the red flag bill to jaywalking when pressed by a reporter. I mean, how many times, Charles, have, uh, I don't want to single you out, but have you jaywalked in the last year? Every law enforcement agency has limited resources and they do have to prioritize. But red flag supporters say it is enforceable. Should I listen to a county commissioner who says it's unconstitutional or should I look to the highest attorney in the state, uh, the attorney general, and should I, who has reviewed the bill and his office has reviewed the bill and said that they believe it is constitutional. And that Why don't you look to the actual constitution of the United States of America that, bear, that, that, that grants the right to bear arms to all citizens? they would be happy to fight. While that may be true, Attorney General Phil Weiser is even more silent publicly than the governor is. He keeps declining our repeated attempts to talk to him. His office said again today the AG is not available to speak. Thanks for checking in. 34 Colorado counties have now declared themselves part of the red flag resistance. Former Weld County Sheriff turned State Senator John Cook says if sheriffs dig their heels in on this, it is certainly within their authority. Sheriffs have discretion on what laws they enforce and which ones they don't. You know, they can say... Great, so there's discretion. The thing I wanted to talk, mention also is, uh, is that, that a judge, it says here, the bill... The bill allows a judge to order a person's guns to be seized before the person has a chance to appear in court. The bill does not require a second hearing. That's not the part I wanted to read. Um, it says uh, about how the judge, how a judge can hold a sheriff in contempt of court for not enforcing the law. That's what that's what the sheriff is uh, bitching about. That if if he's given a court order and fails to uh, go in and confiscate somebody's guns, he could be held in contempt of court. Now, there's no precedence for that, but but uh, there, there certainly will be. Let's listen to what uh, this jackoff has to say. To examine red flag law. Now, you would you would expect the Republican side of the aisle, right? They're the, they're the gunslingers, right? They're Mr. F Second Amendment, right? <laughs> Let's listen to Lindsey Graham. For uh, lack of a better term we're trying to identify people in our communities that are exhibiting uh, pretty extreme behavior in terms of mental health issues where they become a danger to themselves mental health issues that is the that is the, the real subject mental health Ill issues take away their guns see that that you, th you guys think that the republicans are 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 on the side of 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 uh, esc you know gun possession, but they're really not. The whole the whole apparatus, the whole Congress and Senate apparatus right now is designed to take away your gun and make you subservient, make you take away your rights. This Constitution, you know, what's this? It's business of a Constitution. Is it like that old thing? Remember Obama said that? Oh, that old thing. And others, and allow law enforcement and sometimes family members to go to a court to say this person needs some help and we need to stop violence before it occurs. Uh, there'll be a robust due process component. We'll have a witness to talk about the kind of due process you need to make such a determination. There no, because look, if you, I, I, from experience, I used to be a healthcare worker. I was a, I was a dietitian. I worked in a hospital, like right out of college, right? I hated it. But what the, the point is that as, as, a, as a medical person, you saying that someone has a problem, you're doing your job. So do process my ass. A medical doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist can walk in and, and uh, uh, say that this person said this or said that, and we have to take their gun away to... Uh, you know, to protect uh, uh, them from themselves or protect them from hurting someone else. Now, obviously, you could see the opening for abuse where we already have massive corruption in, in, in politics and in, uh, in, uh, in bureaucracy. Now you're going to give them the right to use their discretion to, to, to allow you to have your First Amendment rights. 
The only person that is is should probably lose a gun is if they're taking a gun out, shooting a gun in the air, and saying, "I'm going to kill somebody." Right? Other than that, this is a, this is this is a big foul. First Amendment, Second Amendment foul. Fifteen states that have a form of this, and one of the reasons we're having this hearing is because of Senator Blumenthal. Nobody has been more passionate about trying to find a solution. Uh, it's not the solution that he would prefer sometimes. It's just doing something rather than doing nothing. And Senator Durbin's been that way about immigration for years. See, they all agree. They all, they're all in agreement on this. You know, I, I, I mean, this is, this is a, a crazy law, right? Like, it's like been sliding right under the radar, kind of. So I really do believe that Senator Blumenthal, that after today, we can sort of define the problem that there are a lot of people may be worried, is the government going to come take your guns? And the answer is no. Nobody's going to come and take a gun from you. What do you mean nobody's going to come and take a gun from you? That's the whole point of the red flag law. Someone is going to come and take your gun away from you. Look at look at Diane Feinstein over here, how happy she is. Oh, so happy, the gun grab. But there will be a process for law enforcement and family members uh, to petition a court to say that somebody in your neighborhood or somebody down the street across town is about to blow. So what does that mean? Someone is about to blow. Someone's about to blow. We got to take their gun away. No, this is this is bullshit. So I just wanted to show you that that in Congress and in Senate right now, they are uh, actively actively supporting this. Actively supporting this. Yeah, let's watch Tucker for a Post, and he joins us tonight. Colin, thanks a lot for coming on. Um, oh, so right. why is it that <clears throat> the Second Amendment is the one right enumerated in the Bill of Rights that can be stripped from a citizen without due process? <laughs> well, the problem is, is that you have a group of people in this country who understand the power and the influence of the Second Amendment, which basically gives the power to the people. And when yes. you're talking about a group of people who want to exercise control, well, that's, that's going to be the biggest threat to that. So what do you do? You come up with laws that create a fake due process, so to speak, in order to take that right away from people. Because that's essentially what this is. It's, exactly, a, it's, it's kind of a tofu due process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's nicely put. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. But it, no one is suggest. I mean, first of all, we have a process. No one is, is arguing that the mentally ill, people who pose an imminent yeah. danger, ought to be waving guns around, but we have a process for disarming them, right? If you commit a crime and you are convicted, you don't get to possess a firearm. What, what Tucker Carlson just tucked on, uh, tucked on, uh, touched on is the, the mental illness, right? That if someone is mentally ill, like we think of mentally ill as someone in a straitjacket in a mental institution, but what they're doing, what the healthcare industrial complex is doing is raising the bar on what is mental illness. So as I said earlier, anything that, that can come close to squeaking by as mentally mental illness, maybe depression, who knows, you know, AOCD, they'll, they'll invent some sort of diagnosis that qualifies to take your gun away. And then they'll get some jerk off doctor to sign the paper and get a search warrant and go in and take your, take your stuff. Right? That's what they'll do. Raising the bar on mental illness. So that's in place. Is anyone suggesting a process for taking away your right to vote without a trial? Not that I'm aware of. That's a good point. Why stop there? Take away people's vote, right to vote. They don't know. They're just a stupid person. Why, why are you letting, you're letting that, <clears throat> that mentally ill person vote on, on our representatives? What are you, crazy? You're, you're going to hurt us. You're going to harm us. Everything's, everything is uh, harm and hurt. Huh. So, but if you're not, if, if we don't trust you to have a gun, why would we trust you to choose trust our you. leaders? Exactly. And, that, and that's what I'm understanding. It's almost as if they're trying to create a kind of quasi minority report system in America. Um, right. I, I can understand that there's an element in this country that does not like the idea of the Second Amendment. And that's fine. You can not like the Second Amendment, but guess what? Right. It's still a constitutional right. And we have to send right there. So, so. I mean, I think it's it's obvious, right, that you can't. I mean, a, a constitutional right is a constitutional right, and the right to bear arms is in the Constitution, and uh, it's 
really to to prevent the very people like you know Lindsey Graham from getting up in Congress saying take your gun away because you're crazy. Ah, oh, you're crazy. We're gonna take your gun away, right? Meanwhile, Lindsey Graham's got a whole room full of who's he's got a whole room full of guns. Who's more crazy than a congressman and a senator? We should go after their guns. Take their guns away, and then let them. Let's see if they sign that that uh, that law. And to run for Senate and Congress, you got to be a little crazy, right? E- eccentric, egotistical, you know. Really, I mean, come on, right? So, so those people are crazy, man. Take their gun away before you take away regular citizens' guns away. Marcus Conti reporting.